Kessler, I've been looking for you. I wondered when you'd get here. Quick, you can still do yourself some damage. What am I doing here, Claudia? You're celebrating the opening of the new wing, silly. And checking out the residence from the university. To the new wing. To the new wing. What the hell you're doing? Workers are recommending drivers take Washington Street south to Brandburg to avoid this. And we have a report of an accident on the 7, just before the 115 bypass. The traffic is backed up in... Come on, boss. Grab a body and have some fun. Even Kenneth would have wanted you to have some fun. Even when he was alive, Ken didn't dance. So, you're long overdue. trick is to find someone else who hates to dance and dances badly. Then it just seems like you're being a good Samaritan. I've never been a good Samaritan. All doctors are good Samaritans. Especially the ones who can't heal themselves. What makes you say that? You make me say that. Come on, dance with me. No, I don't think Come so. on. Don't forget, as the CEO of this place, I have access to all the personnel records. And if you refuse to dance with me, I'm going to tell everyone about that scar that you have on your... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're going to wonder how I know. Medical blackmail, Mr. Montgomery. It's devious, but it's effective. <laughs> and I thought we'd agree you'd call me Philip. I should stop it? I think our esteemed resident scientist is making a fool of himself. That's his girlfriend. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. The great Dr. Hayes dates a stripper. The great Dr. Hayes lives with a stripper. Lives with. You don't approve, do you? You know what I think? What? I think. It's better to have everybody laughing at you and be happy than to be highly respected and lonely. Are you flirting with me? I have been for some time. Does that make you uncomfortable? Earlier this morning, we had a three alarm fire down at the warehouse. Please. Come. What do you think of our new wing? I think it's empty. Well, not for long. Soon everybody will want to come here. Oh, really? Yes, really. Now, I'm not stopping with just one wing. I'm going to take this entire outdated, rundown dinosaur and turn it into a state-of-the-art state hospital. hospital. You're a very ambitious man, Philip. You want to know the truth? I settled. I always wanted to be a doctor. I just wasn't any good at cutting up those little frogs. So I went to business school. And now I'm going to do everything that I can to make this into the best healthcare plan and hospital that I can. And the sexiest? <laughs> Sexy is more subtle than that.
Last call, fella. Clear. I'll take over Ralph. He's my patient. Clear. We've zapped him six times already, Jennifer. Clear. Atropine. We've done that. Epi. Did it. We've been pumping on this guy for 35 minutes. Then why didn't anyone call me? Oh, gee, Jen, we've been just a trifle busy here. Cardiac needle. This is not a rest, Jennifer. Look at his mouth. There's blood. Venous, not arterial. This guy's burst something and it ain't just an aorta. Did you get x-rays? For what? We both know what it's gonna look like. This guy's split open like a squashed grape. Ralph? Listen, nothing short of a new pump is gonna help this guy and he can't wait around for us to find one. It's cardiac rupture, Jennifer. You know it and I know it. I'll accept it. man a physical lesson a month ago. It's some borderline numbers, but nothing to indicate this. Is that what you said? Oh, you're a fool. A fool. My husband Mrs. Herring. Oh, don't touch me. Jennifer? Not now, Claudia. Not Claudia. Dr. Hayes. I know you're busy, but I have to talk with you. Me? Why? <laughs> Why me? Well, you are the chief of the medical staff of this hospital, are you not? Yes, I am. Well, then you are the proper person to speak to. I'm sorry, Dr. Hayes, if I seem a bit distracted. I just lost a patient. You don't know where he is? No, I mean... You mean he or she died? Yes. Then say he died. Don't say lost. 
There's nothing wrong with die, dead, death. They're all good words, Dr. Kessler. Euphemisms of my children. I need to speak with you. Please. No, not here. Oh, where? Well, I don't know where. Dinner tonight. Well, can't we? It's very, very important. Tonight? Where? Doesn't matter. All right. Fine. Eight. Fine. Eight what? A clock for dinner. You and Mr. Cover of Newsweek and Time are going to have an intimate dinner? I don't know what he could possibly want to talk to me about. He hasn't said two words to me since he got here. Are you current on your hormone and DNA technology? No. That was Ken's turn. Cedric Herring died in ER 45 minutes ago. I know, and he was just in. I don't know why we have these executives come in for annual checkups if we can't find their life-threatening conditions. You're right. Claudia, pull all the files on my patients who've received physicals here in the last six months. Right away.
someone is following me. Are you sure? Oh, yes, I'm sure. I'm quite sure. <laughs> They're trying to kill me. <laughs> Can I bring you a cocktail? We're talking! We're talking! Dr. Hayes, why did you want to meet You don't know much about my work, do you? About growth and development. And how genes turn on and off. We can figure out how to turn on an appropriate gene. We can do anything with the human body. Anything. We can turn on cellular division to create new cardiac muscle after heart attack. We can turn off cancers. We can turn off lymphomas. Possibilities are endless. Four months ago, I stumbled onto a major breakthrough. <coughs> Dr. Hayes, are you all right? I'm okay. <coughs> you don't look very well. Oh, my, 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 my. Clairvoyant clinician. <coughs> you said that four months ago you stumbled onto a major breakthrough. <laughs> it was it was Nobel material. No, believe me, Nobel material. But I didn't tell anyone about my discovery, and I didn't tell them because I realized that it was only the first step towards something even bigger. It's ironic. It was so damned ironic. What is? <coughs> Dr. Hayes. <coughs> Dr. Hayes? God. Who's that? Dr. Alvin Hayes. Uh huh. And who are you? Dr. Jennifer Kessler. Who are you? I'm uh, Detective Michael Curran. Homicide. Homicide? Then it's true? What's true? Dr. Hayes said someone was trying to kill him. He did? Yes, he did. <sighs> oh, damn it. Sorry, but I, I got a desk full of unsolved homicides. I, I was hoping this one died of natural causes. Well, he did. He did. If you call lung cancer natural. Lung cancer? I'm just guessing, detective, but judging by the color and frequency of the blood coming from his mouth, I'd say it came from his lungs. It was all frothy, bright red. Uh, but I thought you just said that, that someone wanted to kill him. He said that. So the very patient killers. What? Well, lung cancer. It's a pretty slow way to kill someone. No, no, no. I didn't mean that the lung cancer let's, was uh, trying to... Let's go see Danford. Okay? Come on. Come on, he'll be all right. Danford. Sure. Look at this. See? I told you that artery wasn't severed. Not by a bullet, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, it's too clean. Right. Got to get into that brain band then. Okay, grab an apron. Oh, uh, Dr. Danforth, medical examiner, say hello to Dr. Kessler, friend of the recently deceased Dr. Alvin Hayes. 
Dr. Alvin Hayes, the growth hormone guy, he's dead? On a table in your storage room. Of what? You tell us. Homicide. That's what Dr. Kessler thinks. No, I didn't say Why that. would anyone want to kill a researcher? I didn't say that. Mother, may I? Got. Oh, yes. I saw him lecture once. He was brilliant. Aging and hormones. Why do you think he was murdered? I didn't say that. I told the detectives that Dr. Hayes told me that someone was trying to kill him. How old is he? I don't know. Looks older than I remembered. Look at this. Did you ever see hair fall out of a corpse like this? I never have. But anybody this young, anyway. Will you do the autopsy now? No, I'm hungry. It's time for dinner. You find any foul play? Yes. Yes? Yes, and I can tell you who did it. Who? Mr. Tor, Mr. Nicotine, and Mr. Secondhand Smoke. A gang attack. Very funny. Yes, well, it's dinner time. I'll open them up tomorrow. No dinner. I got this guy's hat off in here. Amateurs. When I was a kid, all my friends wanted to be paladin. I wanted to be Dr. Kildare. <clears throat> Hello, Jennifer. How did you know I was here? Police called. Are you all right? I don't know. Did you just see that? Come on, let's go. I'll drive. I, I don't know. The detective may need to talk to me again. Huh? I think he's too involved cutting up somebody to even know that you left. Let's get out of here. That's the second time I've been in that morgue in the last year. I admired him, you know. He did a lot of good research. I'm sorry you lost him. I didn't lose him. He's dead. I'm sorry. It's just something that Hayes said in my office today. You don't lose them, they're dead, he said. But he was wrong. You do lose them. And you spend most of your time hoping that any moment they'll be found. I really miss him. You know, I think you should invite me in for coffee. I don't drink coffee. You can't sleep. It's too late to call up a girlfriend and have her come over. You're going to sit up for hours talking to your cat. I don't have a cat. Of course you don't. That's, that's my point. You need someone who will nod occasionally and say, ah, mm, I see. I see. How about tea? What the hell do you think you are doing? I've never seen you smile like that. Things change. No, smiles don't. 
They may go underground for a while, but can't keep a good one down. It's pretty hot. So what about you? Have you ever been married? Long time ago. We were just a couple of kids playing house. No, no children, no property, just some albums and some books and secondhand furniture. What happened? She came home one day and uh, told me that she was leaving. So we took everything that we owned, we put it in the middle of the floor, played poker for it. <laughs> she cleaned me up, left me with one album. I think it was Little Feet. <laughs> So how did you get from Little Feet to hospital administration? <laughs> you really think of me as the enemy, don't you? I'm just another stiff in a suit, only thinking about the bottom line. Maybe. Yeah, I was going to be a doctor. I told you, like my father. But he talked me out of it. Why? He was a visionary. He saw that things were changing, that, that medicine was being taken over by big business, and he told me... If I really cared about the profession, that I should go into management. That one truly caring and, and resourceful manager could do more to affect health care than any ten of his doctors. And he was right. So that's why you brought in a world-class researcher like Hayes? I want to make the Collington Clinic famous. I buy Hayes at a certain price. And hopefully he'll generate... Ten times that amount in, in medical grants and donations. And then I can use that money to fund other programs like preventative medicine or uh, free community health care centers or children's care programs. Things that otherwise simply couldn't be funded. It's, it's an endless struggle. So does anyone ever call you Phil? Not once in my entire life. <laughs> there it is. I knew I could find it.
just a dream. I can't do this, it feels wrong. sick of this smoke-free building crap. The least you doctors could do is to be on time. Hello, Mrs. Botcher. Thank you for coming in today. Do you mind? Well, now that you're here, would you please tell me what the hell I'm doing here? I mean, you gave me a complete physical. What was it, two months ago? Would you sit down, please? Your assistant tells me that you haven't been feeling very well. I don't believe this. I mean, you dragged me all the way down here, scaring me half to death to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I think we could have done this little dance on the phone. Mm -hmm. Open. Just tell me how you're feeling. <sighs> you want to know how I've been feeling? Mm -hmm. I've been feeling run down, sleep deprived, worn out, wound up. You want to know how I've been feeling? I've been feeling like every other advertising executive in the whole damn world. What have we done yet? Any specific symptoms? <sighs> no. Well, that's not true. But for some damn reason, my hair's been thinning. Mrs. Boncher, I would like you to check into the hospital for a couple of days so I can run a few more tests. You have some very serious symptoms and we should take another look. Oh, thanks for coming. Listen, I don't have all the results in yet, but I want to show you something. Take a look at this. Tissue, human. Correct. Heart, to be exact, from one Titus McIntosh, 100 years old when he died of natural causes. Now, compare it with this one. Oh, it looks the same to me. Me too. That tissue is from our Dr. Hayes. But he was only 48 years old. He died of an aortic aneurysm that broke through the tracheobronchial tree, by the way. And now, door number three. Same. Take a guess. Cedric Harry? Bingo! From the aorta. The tissue is cheesy, friable, the lumen is all but occluded. And you're trying to tell me those men have no cardiac history? None. No. That's crap. When I opened up the left ventricle, I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, I've seen mummies with better tickers. So. <laughs> oh, honey. Yeah, down here, everything's funny. Yeah. Okay, do you see aneurysm here? No. Here? No. Here. No. Okay, what's the point? Alvin Hayes, Cedric Herring, taken within the last six months. Nothing's there, right? Right. And this gentleman here and four others, all deaths within months of our executive physicals. Nothing was diagnosed. So if Hayes and Herring died of aneurysm, it developed after these pictures were taken. Wow. So much for our fancy executive physicals. And the autopsy report showed advanced signs of coronary disease, the kind of disease that takes years to develop. What's your conclusion? Something's killing people in this hospital. What's so funny, Ralph? Oh, gee, Jan, you've just jumped from uh, malpractice to murder in less than 10 seconds. No, I didn't say someone. I said something. I'm afraid we may be dealing with some sort of epidemic here. Epidemic? Listen, these guys were in terrible shape. Good riddance. Good riddance. 
Yeah, we cannot afford to take care of people that don't take care of themselves. Oh, great, Ralph. I'll remind you of that when you're grabbing your chest and screaming in pain, okay? No, no, don't do a damn thing. Just let me fade away with some dignity. That's all I ask, you know? Instead of hanging around through the overzealous work of some doctor. Oh, you call saving people's lives overzealous? We spend most of the resources of this hospital, or any other hospital for that matter, saving people's lives that don't deserve to be saved. Jan. Jan! Should I stay out of the way or do you need someone to yell at? I hate men. Oh my God, you slept with them. Who? I don't know, I was hoping you'd blurt it out. Who was it? You don't have to sleep with them to dislike them. Oh, it deepens the hate. I saw real fear in Hayes that night. I... Why did he want to see me? Did he give you a reason for the meeting before he died? He had a discovery of some kind, and he said... He said something strange. He said it was so ironic. What was? I'm not sure. Dr. Jennifer Kessler, I was wondering if I might have a word with you, please. I'm Jennifer Kessler. Helen Brinquist. I'm very sorry about Dr. Hayes. I was there when it happened. Miss Brinquist, I need to ask you. Dr. Hayes said something uh, just before he died, something about a major breakthrough. Was there? I wasn't aware that you'd finished speaking. It wasn't a question, you know. So you don't know anything about a breakthrough he discovered? No. Well, how can that be? You were his assistant. I'm a molecular biologist like Dr. Hayes, but nowhere near his ability. Perhaps it was his secret. <sighs> Dr. Hayes also said something about someone trying to kill him. Do you have any idea why he would say that? I don't, no. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You worked with this man for years. Was he crazy? Look, you can talk to me. I think I have a right to know. I was with him when he died. He was trying to tell me something. You have no right. What gives you the right? I was there when he lived. He was a great man. I agree. I only want to help. Help who? Him. His reputation, his memory. Dr. Hayes was fascinated by the on-off switching of genes, the balance of repression and expression, the role of repressor proteins and how they bind to the DNA. Would you like to see his map of chromosome 17? He used the growth hormone gene as a prototype. You see, he believed that controlling the growth hormone was the key to controlling disease. I don't know exactly what characteristics I'm looking for here. No, of course you don't. If you'll excuse me, Dr. Kessler, I'm very busy. Is there any possibility that Dr. Hayes' discovery was accidentally released in this hospital? Released? Do you think we're hiding aliens in our laboratory, Dr. Kessler? Patients are dying of some unknown illness in this hospital. Is that a question? Why did Dr. Hayes want to meet with me? What did he want to tell me? 
Please. Leave. You can't go in there! Hello, Jennifer. Ralph, what are you doing here? I'm feeding a rabbit. How about you? I thought all these deaths might somehow be connected to this lab. Oh, yeah. Mad scientist releases death virus, that sort of thing, huh? It's possible, Ralph. Please. Would you leave now? Try to sleep now.
Don't tell me. Another enchanting evening in the theater. Great. Great. What are you doing here? Wait, you think because I'm a cop I ain't got no culture? Wrong. I've been a student of uh, modern dance since I was 14. And I got a particular interest in the same dancer that Dr. Hayes was interested in. What about you? I wanted to talk to her, too. Did you? No. Well, it's not very talky in here, is it? More of a movement thing. Anyway, I thought you might want to know what the autopsy turned out. What? Well, it was definitely drugs involved, cocaine. Oh, yeah. Well, Hayes' lifestyle was hardly a secret. And what's that supposed to mean? Drugs, girls, gambling, mild-mannered scientists by day, able to leap tall women at night. Everything's a joke to you, isn't it? We are talking about one of the world's renowned scientists, one of the great medical minds of this century. Only last year he was on the cover, cover of... Cover of Time magazine. Yes, so was Jimmy Swaggart. He had a double life, too. As a matter of fact, I swear I saw him walk by here about a half an hour ago. Dr. Hayes was hardly a drug addict. Danford found cocaine in his blood. And we found this $5 bill in his pocket. It's got cocaine on it. And you know it's rolled up. That's him. Yowza! We all have our dark sides, Doctor. It's gonna be terrible for the hospital. Yeah, yeah. You'll only be able to charge $10 for those little slippers instead of 20 Somebody was trying to kill Dr. Hayes, all right? It was Dr. Hayes. Good night. Get some sleep. Leave them off, please. Sorry to intrude. You're not intruding. I heard about your patient. You did the best you could. 
That woman was only 54 years old. Sometimes even a doctor's powers are limited. It's not your fault. Isn't it? It's a coincidence. All her vessels were atherominous. The carotids were barely open. Why didn't I find that? Sometimes death is the best thing. Why would you say that? I just mean, maybe it was for the best. She was spared a lot of suffering. Oh, in the hospital, a lot of cost. I won't apologize for worrying about the money it takes to treat people. I care about every patient in this hospital, Jennifer. Do you think the people that I have to answer to can say that? Do you think if somebody doesn't run interference for you doctors that a place like this could survive? I wanted to talk to you about the other night. About us. It was a mistake. No, no, it wasn't. No. It wasn't. But I can't. No, I don't want you to forget him. He'll always be in your life. I'm just asking you to make a little more room inside there. Maybe for me. I don't think anybody's been in the lab all day, Dr. Kessler. Helen? No, they tried to call her, but there was no answer. Well, do you think you could let me in there? Helen was running a test for me, and I'm sure the results are on her desk. Sure. Dr. Brenquist? Need a fresh rabbit's foot? Yeah, I'm okay. Who the hell was this Hayes anyway? Some mad scientist? He was a scientific genius and a pioneer in his field. Cut the malarkey. I mean, Lewis and Clark were pioneers. And they probably killed some animals in their day being on the road like they were. But whoever did that was uh, not a nice person. Look, detective. All right, all right, all right. Let, let that go. Okay. Uh, 
Why, why would uh, anyone want to ransack this place now? What are they looking for? Drugs or uh, secrets? It's possible, I suppose. Dr. Hayes had recently made some kind of genetic breakthrough. But he always published his findings. They weren't secret. Maybe somebody didn't want them published. Why not? Why wouldn't they want that? Keep them for themselves. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm making this up. I, uh, I thought that uh, Hayes was suffering from cocaine paranoia, but uh, as you said someone wanted to kill him. That, that he said someone was trying to kill him, I, I know. When was the last time you saw Miss Brenquist? Uh, yesterday, we passed in the hall once. That's it. She never came to you with any, any fear. I think everyone in the department will agree that she was a very strange bird. Look, Detective, it's very important that we keep this quiet and that the future of the hospital could hang in the balance here. Hey, I'm no stranger to discretion, Mr. Montgomery. You mind if I see Dr. Kessler home now? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Just don't be surprised. I'm going to ask you both some questions in the morning. Discreetly. Thank you, Detective. Take you to my house. You're staying with me tonight. I was in Hayes's lab yesterday. What? Well, I just thought that maybe all these deaths are being caused by something that he... he discovered there. Why would you think that? Why did he need to talk to me? Well, that's not the point. The point is... I saw Ralph Wanamaker there in the... in the animal room. Yeah, so? Well, he seemed very bothered that I saw him. Did you tell this to the detective? No. It didn't seem important then, but... <laughs> I think you're probably right about that. Philip, you remember... Hayes' girlfriend, Carol Donner, the stripper? Hard to forget. <laughs> what are you doing? This is what I take from migraines, but it'll... Make you sleep like a baby. Philip, I really don't need... I don't Yes, need. you do. It's harmless. It's just sumatriptan. Really? Just, um, what do you want? <laughs> no. Come on, you're burned out. You need some rest. Now give me your thigh, or I'll go hunting for it on my own. <laughs> okay. Okay. That a girl. Wait. Wait, you don't look like you know what you're doing. I've been doing this to myself for years. Well, I'm the doctor. This is my leg, so if you don't mind. I'm good at it. Watch. Now, remember all those little frogs you couldn't cut up? Give it to me. I'm deeply offended. Go drink your tea and soothe your wounded ego. You need your rest. Take it. I will. Now. I will.
Yeah? I'm Dr. Kessler from the clinic. I need to talk to you about Dr. Hayes. You're the one that was with him when he died, weren't you? Yes, I was. Carol, I think you're in danger. I must talk to you. You all right? you had that cough? <laughs> I don't know. It's been kind of a lousy week, you know? So why am I in danger? I think someone killed Dr. Hayes. <laughs> you know, I kept saying that somebody was after him. I just thought he was paranoid. <laughs> Maybe he was right. He was right. Did he ever say who was after him or why? No. What are you doing here, Jennifer? Carol? Carol? Tell me, you the night? An album and supper? No. It happened very fast. Oh, that's good. Wouldn't have wanted him to be in a lot of pain, you know. You deserve better than that. I used to be in really great shape, you know. Take class like four times a week. <laughs> but I just haven't felt like going. <laughs> I'm really a dancer, you know. Oh, I know. No, I mean, I'm a real dancer. I was with this troupe for a while. We are gonna go out to San Francisco. <laughs> I thought I had it made. <laughs> the whole thing just kind of folded, you know, no money, of course. <laughs> You know, why don't they ever tell little girls that want to be ballerinas when they grow up that they're never going to be able to pay rent? I really loved him, you know. Why do you think someone would want to kill him? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Maybe he thought he was protecting me. <laughs> Maybe he just thought I was stupid. You're not stupid. I miss him. I know how that feels. <laughs> Arthur Miller and Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> That's how we like to think of us. <laughs> this 
a couple of misfits. <laughs> you know, he said he was gonna keep me young forever. <laughs> <coughs> he said that. Mm-hmm. He said he found a fountain of youth just for me. the lab they were trying to steal i have a notebook of his he, he asked me to keep it for him i don't know why but notebook where is it <coughs> i kept it at the club can you show it to me you've got to show it to me <coughs> keep going get on come on come on he found it philip he was looking for the gene that causes the body to age to work against itself and he found it I have his notes. Now, I, I can only understand part of it, but I'm sure I'm right. It's because of this notebook that he was killed. Notebook? Where are you, Jennifer? I'm backstage at his girlfriend's club, the Vortex. Can you, can you pick me up? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll be right over. We'll go to the police together. Okay, but hurry. This silly angle kind of cocked to one side made me feel different. As if I were someone else, I like that. I'm scared, Jennifer. I'm here, honey. I'm right here. She's dead. Oh, no. Hayes discovered the aging gene, but he didn't find out how to turn it off. He only found out how to turn it on full blast. That's what he meant by it being so ironic. Come on. We've got to go. Jennifer, you're not safe as long as you have a notebook. Now, come on. There's nothing more you can do for her. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Come on. Excuse me. The reason we didn't find coronary problems in our patients is because they weren't there. Two weeks later, they were. It causes the body to age years and just days, Philip. It and I think it's something they're given during a physical or, or while they're a patient in the hospital. And it would have to be injected because, because orally the gastric juices would deactivate it. Someone decided to use Hayes' discovery to kill. Why? We would have to call Kieran. We'll call him as soon as we get to my place. Which phone? No, I'll, I'll make the call. Okay. 
16th Precinct. Uh, connect me with Detective Kieran, please. Great. Great, thanks. Get on his way. Philip, Hayes was so close to finding the real fountain of you. So close. What are you telling me? I'm trying so hard to save it, the clinic. I'm trying to save lives. Hayes gave me the answer. He didn't intend to, but he did. No, him and I, I don't understand. I, I think you do. reached a time when someone has to decide who we can afford to keep alive and who we oh can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. What do you mean you lost her? How could you lose her? You know, she and the daughter woman took off on us, sir. They took off on you. We, we went down there to question her about Hayes. I was down there by the car. He was supposed to wait for me. I knocked on the door. Dr. Kessler answered. Uh, that's when they bolted on us. Look, detective, I understand you guys have a job to do here. But I have a job, too. And my job is to determine exactly what Dr. Hayes or others have done so that we can remedy or contain it before somebody else drops dead around here. Somebody else? Damn. What's the matter with these people? Don't they know the freezer's full? Hear me out. And then when, when Kieran walks through that door, you decide what to do. The choice is yours. You killed those people? Think about it. Those patients refused to take care of themselves. They were smokers, drinkers, drug abusers. Kieran even said it himself. They were all performing slow suicide. You, you let me inject myself with that. No, 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 no. That was a sedative, I swear. Oh, God, you can't think. I love you, Jennifer. If you honestly believe that I could try to take your life, then here, take mine. Go ahead, inject me. I mean it. Go ahead, do it. I would never, never try to harm But you killed Helen. I didn't. You don't understand. I'm not operating in a vacuum here. I'm trying to protect you. Oh. Listen to me. This is all of it. With, with, with Hayes' formula and his notes, you and I can save thousands of lives. And we can keep thousands of others from suffering needlessly. You're playing God, Philip. Can you see that? We already play God every day. Every day, you use whatever supplies are available to you to save lives. 
I decide what those supplies are going to be. If I choose to fund another heart-lung machine instead of another incubator, somebody lives and somebody else dies. A choice is made to let someone die who could be saved. It's not the same. It's not the same. You cannot compare that to killing people. You... Do you know what some of the native aboriginals in Australia do when they have twins? They pour sand down the nostrils of one of the babies. Why? Because they know they can't afford to raise both. Now, are they playing God? Or are they just being practical? We're not primitives, Philip. We're civilized human beings. Oh, really? Well, the clinic can't afford to take care of everyone. There just isn't enough money. No hospital in the country has enough money, Jennifer. Someone has to make the hard choices. Please, you've got to understand. Don't you see? It's nature's way. Nature eliminates those who can't take care of themselves. They have no right to the resources of the clinic, to doctors like you. They're just thieves, stealing life from others who deserve it more. Look at me. Look. Please, Jennifer. I'm not a monster. Oh, God. I can't believe in what I'm trying to do. Then I'll stop. Today, right now, none of it means anything to me. Unless you with me. Did you really call the police? Jennifer. You're a liar and a killer. Why didn't you just use a gun or a knife, Philip? It would have been more honest. Jennifer. Oh, I hate you, Fred. Jennifer, no, please. An hour ago, I held that girl in my arms while she died. Why? Because she knew too much. Because you didn't like her lifestyle. And you thought I'd help you be a part of that? Murdering people to save lives? How could you? Get me an ambulance, please. And, and get me the police.
Dr. Kessler, are you all right? Jennifer's route. It's all right.